Konnichiwa. You've now completed 10 lessons and it's time for a change of pace. We've learned enough now that we can start looking at some real narrative. It'll be a little simplified at first, but we can use this to bring together the things we've learned so far. We'll also be learning new structural elements because even in the simplest story we're going to encounter things that we need to learn. But I think this may be a more interesting way of doing it. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. Alright, now let's go into a story that I believe we all know. Arihi. Arisu wa kawa no soba ni ita. Now this is a simple sentence. The word kawa means river. And soba means beside and it's a noun. So kawa no soba is the beside of the river. Just as we put something on the on of the table or the under of the table. And we also always mark it with ni. So the beside of the river is where Aris was. Aru means a certain, so Aru he is like one day or a certain day. And let's notice that what's happening here is what we've seen before. Aru is the verb that means exist or be. And what we've done here is what we've seen in the video lesson on so-called adjectives. We can make any engine into an adjective. So Aru is an A does B engine, an U engine. So if we say Hong ga aru, we're saying there is a book, a book exists. And if we move that aru engine to the other side of the book, we turn it white and it becomes a descriptor, an adjectival. So we're saying aru hon, an existing book, a certain book, a book that there is. And it's the same aru hi, a certain day. Aru hi, now, the next sentence is going to be a little bit more complex, but don't worry, it's always easy when there's a fully functioning android to help you. Actually, I'm not quite fully functioning, but for the purposes of showing you Japanese, I am. Onei-chan wa tsumaranai hon wo yonde itte asonde so we've got quite a complex sentence here, and let's break it down. Onei-chan means big sister. Ne is sister. Chan, I'm sure you know, is a cute, friendly honorific. O is also an honorific. So Onei-chan, big sister. Tsumaranai means dull or boring. Hon, as we know, is book. Yomu means read. Yonde iru. We put the yomu into the te form and add iru, and that means is reading. And then we're putting the iru itself into the te form. So why are we doing all that? Let's take a look. Onechen wa tsumaranai hon wo yonde itte. Big sister is reading a boring book. But then that te, te form has a lot of different uses. In this case, if we complete a clause, big sister is reading a boring book, that's a complete clause, isn't it? And if we turn that final the engine into the te form, what we're saying is that something else is going to follow this clause. We are indicating that we're making a complex sentence made up of more than one clause. So it's like saying, big sister was reading a boring book and and then something else comes. Asonde kurenakata. Asobu means to play, and that also is in the te form, isn't it? Asobu, asonde. If you're in any doubt of how we make these te forms, please go back to the video lesson on the te form and refresh your memory. Asonde kurenakata. Now this is another use of the te form. Te form is terribly important and it does various different things. What's it doing here? Well, sobu, as we know, means play. Kureru means to give. And it specifically means give downwards. 
And the reason we say give downwards in Japanese is because we're always polite to people. So we always represent ourselves as being below other people and other people as being above ourselves. So if I say kuraru, give, I always mean that someone is giving something to me or to someone close to me. But what is Alice's big sister giving or not giving to Alice? Well, it's not the book. In fact, it's not any actual object. She's giving the action to which Kuraru is connected by the te form. She is giving, or in this case not giving, the act of playing to Alice. What do we mean by that? Well, we say Kuraru not only for giving a thing, a book, a present, a candy, we also say it for giving an action, for doing something for our benefit. And this is very, very often used in Japanese, so it's important to understand it. If someone does something for our benefit, we turn that action to te form and we add kureru. If we do something for someone else's benefit, we turn that action into te form and add ageru, which means to give upward. In other words, to give to you, to give to another person. Right, so kureru and ageru give down to me or my group. Ageru give up to you or someone else or your group or their group. So, what is the second part of the sentence? It's asonde kuranakatta. She didn't play. She didn't give Alice playing with. She didn't play for Alice's benefit. It's rather different from anything we find in English, but I think it's also very expressive, something we could actually do with having in English. So now let's look at the whole sentence again. Big Sister was reading a boring book and did not play with Alice. Notice that we have two complete clauses here. Onei-chan wa tsumaranai hon o yonda. That's a complete clause in itself, isn't it? Onei-chan wa asonde kuranakatta. Onei-chan did not play for Alice's benefit. And we've connected the two together with a te form. A thing we should notice here is that onei-chan wa tsumaranai hon o yonda doesn't tell us the tense. We don't know whether she's reading a boring book right now or in the future or in the past. We don't know that until we get to the end of the sentence. In English, we put the tense marker on both halves of a complex sentence. We would say, Big Sister was reading a boring book, so we already know that it's in the past. But in Japanese, we put that tense marker, ta or katta, at the end, and we only need one tense marker per sentence. Yonne itte could mean is reading, could mean was reading. But because a sonne kuranakatta is in the past and is part of the same sentence, we have put everything into the past. Well, we didn't get very far into Alice's adventure today, did we? But I think we can proceed faster as we get used to real text and learn the basic narrative structures. Of course, I will be doing regular structure lessons still as well. But how do you like this story approach? Would you like to continue with it? Please let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments too. And I will answer as always. I'd like to thank my Gold Kakeshi patrons, my producer angels who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters. And I'd like to thank you for attending this lesson. Kore kara mo yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Class dismissed.